to the men, living and dead, who did these things, we dedicate this program, The Dam Busters, presented by the author himself, Paul Brickhill, dramatized by Morris West, an Australasian radio production. Brickhill. With a certain grim satisfaction, Barnes Wallace approached his next task. To measure exactly how much high explosive would be required to breach the concrete retaining wall of a dam. He had run into so many blank walls in the previous months that the prospect of blowing onto smithereens gave him boyish pleasure. So, on a grey winter's afternoon, he climbed the Welsh hills to the head of Ryder Lake, where a concrete wall cut off a narrow neck of water from the main body of the lake. On a rope, he lowered the explosive into the water, down against the inner base of the wall. Engineers unrolled the insulated cables from a small drum and connected them to the detonator. Then they stood a few moments together, a grey, wind-blown group looking down at the choppy water. We're ready to shoot when you are, sir. Uh, tell me again, how was the charge placed? Hard up against the base of the wall, sir. As near to dead centre as I could get it. You checked the detonator connection? Checked and double-checked, Mr. Wallace. Is the charge on the lake bed or above it? No, oh, about three feet above it, sir. There's a ledge of concrete that drops down into the mud. I thought it better to put it there. That's fine, fine. If it were a bomb, you see, it would strike above the ground level. Well, that's all, I think. Ready, everybody. Watch for debris. Fire on the count of three. One, two, three. The dam's gone! Did you see that? It's gone! We've blown the dam! Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Wallace. Oh, yes, yes, my husband's just come in. I'll, I'll get him for you. It's for you, dear, Sir Henry Tizard. Oh, good, good. I was beginning to wonder why I hadn't heard from him. Thank you, dear. Hello, uh, this is Wallace. Oh, Wallace, this is Tizard here. I, um, I got your reports. Most interesting. I passed them on to the quarters, I promised. You got the second set? The test on the bomb casing? Yes, yes, I got those two. Excellent work, Wallace. They convince anybody but a congenital idiot. I'm very glad. When do we start work, sir? We don't. I beg your pardon? I said we don't. Believe me, old man, I'm as disappointed as you are, but... Um, but what? You know, the reports are now in the hands of a bunch of people who call themselves policy controllers. They regard the whole idea as unpractical and wasteful. Oh, no. Now, I don't want you to lose heart altogether. It is going to take some more time. The trouble is, so few people in London seem to be able to read. I'm working on other approaches now. But if only I had something else to show them. But uh, the reports... Now, I've the... told you, my dear fellow, they can't read. If we had a picture book, perhaps. Pictures? But but we, we've got pictures. Oh, what sort of pictures? Moving pictures. Films. I've got a complete record of every stage of the operation. In the air, on the surface, and under the water. Well, in that case, my dear Wallace, we really can get somewhere. Fast. Pack a bag and your films and get the first train to London. Whom are you going to talk to this time? Bomber Harris. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. They tell me he's the toughest autocrat in the business. I know that. That's why I want you here. If you can't convince Harris, nobody can. <laughs> Come in. No, it's you, Tizard. This, I suppose, is your inventor fellow. This is Mr. Barnes Wallace. Oh. Well, sit down. Take a chair. Haven't much time to waste. Now, what the devil do you want, Wallace? 
I've got no time for you damned inventors, you know. My boys' lives are too precious to risk in your crazy inventions. I designed the place that your boys are flying today. Was that? Oh, did you? Well, why don't you stick to your last like a good cobbler? Aircraft are made to carry bombs. Bombs are made to do damage. I've worked out a plan for destroying the German dams in the Ruhr. As I've heard about it. It's far-fetched. I don't think so. I've tested it. It works. If you think you can walk in here and get a squadron of Lancasters out of me, you've made a mistake. You won't. Now, look here, Sir Arthur. I'll take it easy, Wallace. We don't want a squadron, sir. We'd like a chance to prove it in trial with one Lancaster first. Well, uh, you really think you can knock a dam down with that thing? Yes. Well, it may take three or four, but we can put them all in the same place. We'll prove it will work. I'll prove it, and I'll arrange a squadron. But I'm tired of half-baked inventors trying to run things. No, look... We've got some films here that show clearly how it works. All right, let's see them. I'll get Sanderby in on this. He can work the projector. If it's as good as you say, there's no point in letting everyone know. Come into the projection room. I'll have some tea sent in. This shot was taken inside a glass tank. You, you see the model bomb plunging under the water and crawling into position at the base of the wall which is exactly where we need it, to create the maximum damage by transmitted thrust. And uh, that's all, gentlemen. Switch on the lights. Well, Harris, what do you think? Very interesting. If you want any other demonstrations, I'll be... Nothing more for the moment, thanks. I'll think it over. Day, Tazard. Day, Wallace. Thanks for coming. It's nine o'clock, dear. You're tired. Why don't you go to bed early for a change? No, no, not yet, dear. I'll sit up for a while, I think. You know, I've been wondering. Wondering what, dear? Why it is that men of affairs, men of action, great men, some of them, regard the scientists as a sort of adult-pated idiot who can't even tell the time of day. They don't all think that way, my dear. After all, you told me yourself you had a very satisfactory interview today with Air Marshal Harris. Well, it wasn't unsatisfactory. The saddening part is that it has taken all these months to persuade him to regard me as what I am. A reputable scientist with solid achievement to his credit. Uh, look, my dear, because themselves have made hundreds of thousands of pounds out of me alone. They know that when I present them with a set of figures and drawings, it's solidly reasoned, accurate work. Not to be dismissed lightly because they... They don't like the colour of my eyes or the way I wear my tie. There, there, there are times when I... Yeah, who can be calling at this hour? Oh, I'll take it. It's probably someone from the works. Oh, Sir Charles Craven. This is an unexpected pleasure, sir. Won't you come in? I, uh, I happen to be passing, Wallace, and as a matter is uh, rather important, uh, I thought I'd take the opportunity of seeing you. Oh, I'm glad you did. You're just in time for a cup of tea. Uh, no, no, Wallace... Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like a word in private. In my study, then? Uh, here. And now, Sir Charles, what can I do for you? Uh, this uh, could be awkward for both of us. Awkward? In what way? Well, as you know, Wallace, you are and always have been one of the most important and most valued members of Vickers. I'm glad to hear it work which you are doing on aircraft design is of vital importance to this country and to, uh, well, to the Empire. I'm aware of that, too. <clears throat> and, uh, unfortunately, Wallace, you seem to be diverting a great deal of time and energy to this project of, uh, of dam construction. All of which is quite within the scope of my contract. Oh, yes, 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 quite. No question of that at all. Uh, However, Wallace, it appears that you've been peddling this project with some insistence around the ministries. It's an important project. I've used every effort to have it accepted. Quite so, quite so. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Wallace, I have received information from certain friends of mine which indicates that you have been making a nuisance of yourself around the ministries. I have been asked to request you in the politest possible fashion to stop this nonsense and stick to your own job. In that case, Sir Charles... It would appear that I'm not acting in the best interest of the war effort. 
I feel, therefore, that I should offer you my resignation and... and try something else. You... you mean to say that... It's mutiny, that's what it is, Wallace. Mutiny! Mutiny! Do you mind letting yourself out, Sir Charles? I've had a long day. I'm very tired. Good night, Wallace. Darling. Darling, what is it? What was Sir Charles shouting about? I... I've resigned. Resigned? But what for? Why? All your work. Do you mind bringing me a glass of water? I, I think I'll sit down for a moment. Was it because of the other things you've been doing? That's right. I'm, I'm a nuisance at the ministries. Oh no. I, I'll get the water. No, no, it, it's all right now, my dear. It's foolish to be upset. Just, um, just make me a cup of tea. I, I think I'll go to bed. Good night, my dear. Memorandum from Prime Minister to Chief of Air Staff. I have read with great interest the reports covered by your minute IJX-317 and the conclusions reached by your staff. These conclusions agree substantially with those submitted to me from other quarters. I should like you to attend a meeting at Chequers at 9.30 a.m. on Thursday next for final discussion and decision on this vitally important project. Message ends. Memorandum acknowledged. I shall be present at the Chequers meeting on Thursday next at 9.30 a.m. Message ends. Morning, Mr. Wallace. Hmm? Oh, morning, Bud. Oh, Mr. Wallace. Yes, Bud, what is it? I left a message in her office, Mr. Wallace. Sir Charles Craven would like to see you when you come in. Sir Charles? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, Bud, I'll call in and see him. February the 26th. Oh, well, it had to come sometime. Wallace here. Oh, uh, no, this is Craven. Uh, look, if you're free now, I'd like you to come to my office. Yes, sir. Yes, I'll be right along. Good morning, Wallace. Uh, please take a chair. Thank you. Um, Wallace, uh, I, I, I feel I owe you some sort of an apology. Uh, well, for... Uh, it's unnecessary, Sir Charles. You will probably be called to London within the next hour or two, but for, well, for obvious reasons, I should like you to have the news from me first. What news? Mr. Wallace... Orders have been received from the Prime Minister through the Chief of the Air Staff that your dam's project is to go ahead immediately. The operation must be ready at all costs no later than May. I see. That's very good news, isn't it, sir? That's very good news. The project was approved at last, and for Barnes Wallace, life was work from dawn till midnight. He planned, he drafted, thought, discussed, consulted experts on weather and explosives, on aerodynamics and civil engineering. His job was to design the dam buster bomb. Other men had the problem of delivering it on target. So, on March the 15th, 
Sir Arthur Harris, Chief of Bomber Command, called to his headquarters, Air Vice Marshal, the Honorable Rafe Cochrane. Well, that's the project, Cocky. You've got to breach the Myrna Dam and a couple of others with the biggest bomb of all time. I know it sounds far-fetched, but I think it has a good chance. Well, sir, I've known Wallace for 25 years. He's a wonderful engineer. I've never known him not to produce the goods. Yeah, well, you know how he works. I hope he produces the goods this time. Now, Cocky, I want you to organize a raid. Ask for anything you want, as long as it's reasonable. Well, it's going to need some good air crews. I think I'd better screen one of my squadrons right away and start training them. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to take a single squadron out of the line if I can help it. We mustn't interfere with our striking force. What I have in mind is a new squadron of experienced people who are just finishing a tour of duty. Some of the keen chaps won't mind doing another trip. You find enough in your group? Yes, sir, I think I can. Have you got any particular man in mind to command it? Yes, yes, I have. Gibson. Guy Gibson. Uh, you couldn't find a better man. As a matter of fact, he's going out tonight. It's the last trip of his third tour. Then he's due to leave. Well, let's hope he gets back safely. What's the target? Stuttgart. It's liable to be a dirty run. In fact, I'm rather worried about it. Sorry to wake you so early, sir, but uh, there's an urgent message from group headquarters. Oh, no. I'm going on leave today. Yes, sir. Let's hope it's nothing... Yeah, uh... let's hope. Give it to me. Uh, leave cancelled. Report immediately. Number five, group headquarters. Duh. Wouldn't it? Uh, yes, sir. Wouldn't it? Gibson, nice to see you. Take a chair. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, first, Gibson, I'd like to congratulate you on the bounty of DSL. Oh, thank you, sir. Would you like to do one more trip? What kind of a trip, sir? An important one. I can't tell you any more about it now, except that you would command the operation. Well, yes, I, uh, I think so, sir. Good. That's fine. I want to warn you that this will be no ordinary raid and it can't be done for at least two months. Uh, it's, it's not the, uh, it's not the turbots, is it, sir? <laughs> no, it isn't. Oh, <laughs> thank God for that. Training for this raid is so important that the Commander-in-Chief wants a special squadron formed. I want you to form it. As far as air crews are concerned, you'll want good ones. You'd better pick them yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm telling all the squadrons they'll have to give you all their best crews. They won't like it, but that's too bad. I'll have to move fast, as you haven't got very long, and training is very important. Try to get your aircraft flying in four days. Well, um, what sort of training? What sort of target? Low flying. You've got to be able to low fly at night until it's second nature. I can't tell you the target yet, but you've all got to be perfect at low flying at night. Mm, I know just the boy in Australia, Mickey Martin. Even got a gong for low flying. Get hold of him. Yes, sir. Um, now, how about aircraft, sir? The equipment staff have that in hand. The first will be flown in tomorrow. One thing more. Yes, sir? Security. Mm. This is a top-secret operation. As far as the others are concerned, this is just an ordinary new squadron. 
Very good, sir. Group Captain Whitworth commands the bomber base at Scampton. You'll be training there. He'll give you any help you want. That's all, Gibson. Good day. Oh, uh, yeah, well, good day, sir. Hmm. How the hell do you start to organize a squadron? <laughs> well, that's one of the things even a wing commander is expected to boggle at. There are 21 crews, seven men in each. There are pilots, navigators, engineers, bomb aimers, wireless operators and gunners. There are 21 aircraft. There are a dozen different trades in the ground crew. There's a list of equipment from spark plugs to thermos flasks. There are blankets and beer, boot laces and toilet paper. And to get all those things, you have to have a number. A number? What sort of a number? Well, a squadron number, of course. I haven't got a squadron yet. How the hell do I do go about getting a number? Oh, some boffin in the air ministry. They probably don't work so fast there. Well, what do I do then? <laughs> you make one up. For the moment, we'll call you Squadron X. Uh, uh, do you mind if I... Well, holy smoke, Gibson. Guy Gibson. Mickey Martin. Oh, come in. Come in, boy. Sit down. <laughs> Yeah, I sent out a panic call for you two days ago. Yes, I got it. I'm on my way to Scampton now. Uh, what gives, Guy? What's all the mystery about? Well, it's it's a long story, Mickey. Most of it I don't know myself. Something about a new squadron. Oh, well, something, yes. Um, we haven't even got a number yet. A lot of the boys are waiting for us at Scampton. Oh, nice to be with you, Guy, but uh, why me? Well, it's a low-flying job. I want you for training the boys. Hmm. Uh, do I come in on the strike? Mm, you do. Fine, fine. That's all I wanted to know. Uh, whatever boys have you got? Well, uh, there's uh, Hopgood, uh, Shannon, in, an Aussie, and Burpee, they're from my own squadron. Uh, Dingy Young is uh, senior flight commander, and there's quite a bunch of Aussies. Mm -hmm. uh, Simpson, Foxley, uh, Jack Lego, and Bob Hay. They're my boys. Oh, that's a good show. Yeah, we've got a fine bunch of blokes, but... Uh, no, I hate to think of the sorting out. We've got to do when we get to Scampton. Yeah. You need a good flight sergeant to do that for you. No, I think I've got one. Chiefy Powell. You know? Sure. He's good. He knows his job and he looks after the men. Mm. That's a good start, Mickey. I'll be glad to get all the details sorted out and start training. Flight Sergeant Powell reporting, sir. Oh, well, stand easy, Flight. Uh, what's the news? Well, sir, all air crews are in and settled in quarters. I'll see them at mess tonight. Uh, what about ground staff? Oh, we're still coming in, sir. I'm sorting them out now. They look pretty good to me, but... Uh... Uh, what is it? A bit of trouble, sir. What sort of trouble? A bunch of charge sheets. One of the SPs has been putting my men in for scruffy uniforms. Anything in it? Nothing, sir. The boys have had to travel a long way. Some of them need new outfits anyway. To hell with the charges. We can't start a squadron that way. Well, that fixes that. Now, uh, tell the equipment officer that I want all my men refitted tomorrow morning. Well, I've already done that, sir, but he says the squadron hasn't got a number and he hasn't got any authority. Oh, does he? Ah. Give me that phone. Ah, is that the equipment officer? Listen, this is Gibson. And what's this I hear about no refit for my men? I don't give a tinker's damn whether they've got a number or not. That's not your business, that's mine. I want every one of those men completely refitted before parade tomorrow morning. To hell with the papers. I'll sign them when I'm ready. That's that. All right, take over flight. I'll see the men on parade tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. And, uh, sir. Yes? I think I'm going to like this squadron, sir. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, close the door, please. Uh, all mess staff and untouched personnel will leave. Right. Now, I know you're all wondering why you're here. <clears throat> well, you're here as a crack squadron to do a special job, which uh, 
I'm told, will have startling results and may shorten the war. I can't tell you what the target is or where it is. All I can tell you is you'll have to practice low flying, day and night, until you can do it with your eyes shut. What do you know about that? It's the ruddy turpits. No, don't, don't jump to conclusions. It may be the turpits, it may not. Whatever it is, I want you to be ready. If I tell you to fly to a tree in the middle of England, I want you to be able to do it. If I uh, tell you to fly through a, a hangar that isn't wide enough for your wingtips, I want you to be able to do that too. You've got to do everything you're told without question. Now, discipline is essential. So is security. You're going to be talked about. Rumors are flying about already, but you've got to keep your mouths shut. If you get stuck in the pub on the hops and someone asks you what it's all about, tell him to jump in the river. Your lives depend upon secrecy. If we can surprise the enemy, everything will be fine. If not, well, then you're, you're old enough and ugly enough to know what happens. <laughs> That's about all. I'll uh, give you more details in the briefing room tomorrow morning. Well, now... I'd like someone to buy me a drink. <laughs> 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 <laughs>